summer's here and for most people this makes us think of country lanes and two-seater sports cars. Honda's S2000 was eagerly awaited once the press knew it was to make production. Using the variable valve timing or VTEC technology, Honda has rung 275 brake horsepower from a two-litre engine. The company has invested to aim this hot little roadster at a grey area in the market between the Mazda MX-5s of this world and the Porsche Boxster. Of course, sports cars of this calibre are seen as one for the boys, leaving the MX-5 and the MGF for us girlies. Outrageous. Once you get in the car, there's a few funky bits that your average bloke would definitely miss out on. Look at this small chrome gear stick, I really like that. And also the concealed stereo, that looks pretty swish. But the best part about the car is the push button engine start. The only problem is, look at the palaver that you've got to go through, you definitely couldn't do a quick start. First of all, you've got to check that you're locked in. Okay, there you go. Push that on, turn the key round. Whoops. Okay, let's try again. Push the other button. There you go, we're locked in now. Turn that on. And to answer the most important question, can a girlie really handle a car like this? One comment about the S2000 is that at low revs, it's not really a neck snapper, but once you get into the high revs, it really comes alive. In terms of handling and grip, it's pretty steady. So you're not in for too many surprises, unless you're driving like a complete idiot. the looks it doesn't really do it for me it doesn't make me go wow there's no real shock factor it doesn't turn me on mr honda it looks more understated than that refined yet still with an underlying aggression to the cut-off tail actually this car could be one for the girls because we don't need to shout for attention do we boys but now in terms of practicalities, you can definitely fit a weekend's worth of luggage in the back of that boot. And if golf's your thing, no problem, they'll fit in nicely. But what about price? Well, we are talking big money. So you're looking at a bill for just over £28,000 for the S2000. The seats are adorned with leather, but apart from that, it doesn't really have that much to shout about, apart from that funky gear stick. So have Honda got it right? Well, in my opinion, this car would be best suited for a boy racer. And if I had an extra three grand, I'd rather put it towards a Mercedes SLK. So sorry, Mr. Honda, but nice gear stick though. I am Noemi, uh, the Magnum girl. Yeah, it was a, a competition um, and there was like a 10,000 girls from all over, from different countries and I won on the end. It was one day of shoot, they flew me in from New York and they did the shoot and, and that was it. I come from Interlaken. That's a small village, very, very beautiful, surrounded from mountains and lakes, and very pretty. I love modeling and I'm using this as a stepping stone to um, inspire people to make different projects, to work in music, um, to travel, to learn. Oh, you know, in music really, it helps about your taste, you know, depending if you sing or, or whatever you do, it's about your talent, really. Then, of course, I think the modeling would help, you know, from the hype-wise, it will reflect both of it. The, the, the DJing will help the modeling and the modeling will help the DJ, so, um, but really, for music, it's about talent. 
I was very lucky. I traveled to really, really beautiful places, um, Indonesia, uh, many islands, Africa, um, just really inspiring places. Very, very nice. The young girls, they're sort of blinded by the glamour of it all, but it's definitely a very hard job. It takes a lot from you, you know, and it takes a lot of strength, you know, but it's fun as well, but um, it's definitely not an easy job. Uh, you have to really see that um, uh, it's a very professional agency, you know, like, and it takes the character as well, you know, uh, but you should definitely see that it's a professional agency. I mean, I went to New York and I lived with Eileen Ford and uh, I lived with her and she took very well care of me. And my father actually, he is in Nepal. He makes a road from um, Kathmandu to Tibet. China and this is a really big project He's the project manager over there it's a very difficult um, job to do because all the rain the monsoon you know like all the, 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 the streets that were there before they all got you know slipped away. Kamandu itself is very very dirty very stinky because it's in the valley and um, the, the king has this very bad gasoline and they have this uh, taxis called Tuk Tuk and it, the pollution is really, really bad. Like you kind of need to have a mask because it's so bad. But otherwise, I mean, the countryside is beautiful. It's really, really nice. Well, the drivers in Rio, um, like in many places, I mean, Argentina as well, very, very crazy drivers, very, very fast and changing lines and dangerous dangerous driving and New York as well very crazy driving crazy driving um, um, the taxi drivers they drive really really crazy they just change lines but I'm really amazed that never really anything happens you have to be really really good drivers to drive in New York Well, I think if a guy would drive up with a car like this, I think I would um, definitely think something. I would think that um, he would be a classy guy, maybe, you know. Uh, I would hope so, he would not be a macho guy, but there's as well the classy guy, nice people that would drive a car like this, which is actually a lot of fun to drive in the convertible. Well, I think people that would drive a car like this, they would be practical, you know, they would like to travel uh, in nature a lot. They might want to have uh, children or dog, animals, something like that. But I think just practical people would want to drive a car like that. Well, I would see myself in, um, well, I would have a dog, so something bigger, definitely. The Ranch Rover. I like the Ranch Rover. I like the Ranch Rover and I like Mercedes and I like, um, yeah. Why the Range Rover? I don't know, I like the, the simple look of it. I just like it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, at that point I would have to look through different cars, you know. But I like it and it has a lot of backspace because I'd like to have a Great Dane, so. Yeah, I grew up with a Great Dane. <laughs> I love these dogs very much. I went on a road trip when I was like about 17 from Memphis, Tennessee all the way to Los Angeles and then back that took us one month and um, it was a really really funny and um, exhausting event. It was just you know these two girls in this sports car um, thanks God nothing bad happened we really had an angel watching over us but um, uh, once we were driving in the Rocky Mountains and this big van was like, just keep on coming on our back, you know? And we were like both being afraid because they were huge vans, you know? And just trying to get away from him. Uh, there's stuff on hold, you know? Uh, 
which I'm excited about, but uh, I'm only going to talk about it if it comes through, but I think you're going to see my face around. What price would you put on one extra gear, 32 brake horsepower and 8 miles an hour? Hard to say? Well, Porsche reckon that it's worth almost 8 grand. Because that's how much more you'll have to pay to swap your basic Boxster for this, the Boxster S. Now, visually, you wouldn't be able to tell the two cars apart. That's because all the changes to the Boxster S are under the skin. And those changes have transformed the Boxster from a great sports car into an absolutely superb one. The kind of car that makes sticking to the speed limits very difficult indeed. And it isn't just the engine that's been worked on. Porsche have made revisions to the suspension and the chassis. The shocks and springs are now much firmer and the rear axle now has wheel mounts and guiding elements to help you get the most out of the car's performance. The Boxster's flat six now displaces 3.2 litres and of course with incredible performance like that you need some pretty incredible brakes to go with it and the Boxster S has got an all new braking system based on the 911 Carreras. Still features ABS as standard but the wheel discs are now larger and wider and they've been cross drilled so that you're guaranteed fantastic braking even in the worst conditions. Shall we? Should we give it a try? Are you ready? Oh, lovely. I can think we can safely say that they work just about fine. The S has got the extra gear that I mentioned earlier, and if you fancy it, then there's a Tiptronic option you can go for that lets you play at being a racing driver. It does, however, slightly reduce the performance, but as 0 60 only takes half a second more, I don't think you'll lose much sleep over it. Now, I know that talking about this car is beginning to make me sound like an infatuated teenager, so I've been trying to be practical and think about some of the bad points, and the best I can come up with is that the interior doesn't really feel like it belongs in a £42,000 car, and there aren't that many storage spaces in here for all your bits and pieces. What can I say? It's a great car! I've got to say, I really do love this car. If it was a man, I'd have it down the altar by now, kicking and screaming. It feels fantastic to drive. It's taut, it's firm, and even at high speeds, it feels incredibly solid and stable. Those massive 18-inch wheels aren't going anywhere other than the direction that you point them in. The steering is responsive, it's got bags of feedback, it's just an all-round blast to drive, and it's topped off by the sound that comes out of the exhaust. Oh, I could listen to that all day. It sounds amazing. So is this wolf in sheep's clothing worth it? Well, that depends on how much one extra gear, 32 brake horsepower and 8 miles an hour is worth to you. Would you splash out on the Boxster S or would you buy the basic Boxster and still have enough spare change to buy a brand new Volkswagen Lupo as well? What is it about kit cars that drives you guys nuts? Quick Chicks called up Danny Hunt to check out Mark Fisher, owner of the Fisher Car Company, and to test drive the fabulous Fury. I'm going to take a drive in this Crossflow powered car. <laughs> oh, there's no door handles. I'm just a bloody typical. I know why you'd make me wear a skirt now. Excuse me. It's not very elegant. Is it? Switch off now, okay? We'll cut to that later. Just... I love it! I love it! Those 
in the know will recognise the Fury as a silver. It was originally developed from the Mark IV Striker, or Phoenix, as it became known. With this kind of track pedigree, it's no surprise that Fisher have developed their own racer. They already are a strong force in, uh, in motorsport. We have uh, three or four cars running in the 750 Kit Car Championship, and then uh, obviously there are cars running in Sprint Championships and Hill Climb Championships around the country as well. So we hope for great things this year. We have um, uh, a Formula Ford driver racing a Fury in the Kit Car Championship called Andy Chardsley, who I believe is probably going to take the championship. Sitting here, I could be in a sports car of the 60s. The Fury has never had the luxuries of a modern day sports car. It's all about having fun. but I know that there's one question that all you fellas out there are dying to ask and that is can this little lady pull the birds for you now undoubtedly it's very very sexy I definitely want one for Christmas but there is one snag so you blokes and just dry yourself out you've got trousers on whatever do you James Bond jump in jump out but there is a problem for us girls that is exiting to the society ball will never be the same again. Oh, and the windscreen wipers are going now. Oh, you see what I mean? Listen, I'm not wearing a skirt again. This is it now. The producer. Rear skirt, rear skirt. I'm told that you can build a Fury for as little as £5,000, but most people want to spend a little bit more. What, maybe what you didn't know was that Fisher can actually build your car so you can drive it away, and prices for that starts at around £10,500 for your basic blade engine car. The Owners Club run national and local events all over the country, so the fun doesn't have to stop after your Sunday blast down your favourite road. As for me, I want to know what totty I can pull in this. Let's face it, there's lots out there. I can just get it. I'm asleep. I'm a lady. Woo, here I go! This show really does have everything, and the best thing, it's all under one roof. Right then, so it's uh, the suit, lovely, uh, the boots, okay, and the helmet. Oh, great. So, have you, like me, always wanted to walk down a Formula One pit lane? Well, normally you'd need a pass, it's rarer than a Minardi Grand Prix victory. But here at the show, of course, it's all sorted. But what everybody really wants to do when they get into a Formula One garage is drive one of these things. See how it fits. Okay, and steering wheel on. Excellent, thank you. I'm away. After the show, we found a group of drivers that had been assembled to have a race in those fantastic Robin Reliance. Porsche Super Cup driver Johnny Molum had his own idea about how to win the race. My intention is to have John Cleland off before the first corner, regardless of whether he starts behind me or in front of me. Excellent. Lovely. Thank you. Well, 
Well, that's about all I've got the energy to see at the show today, but we've had a great day out. M is for motorsport, and F1 chief Bernie Eccleston has been recently quoted as saying that there will never again be a woman driver in Formula One. Oh, come on, Bernie. N is for no claims bonus, and if you've got one of these, you're just not trying hard enough. O is for one careful lady owner. Yeah, and nine boy racers. Pull the other one, boys. P is for parking. Yeah, OK, let's face it, women can't park. But isn't that because you guys keep telling us that this is six inches? Q is for queuing, that thing we all hate to do. So try and avoid Spaghetti Junction, the M25, and practically all of central London. R is for road rage. While female motorists are just as likely as males to get involved in a bit of a shouting match or give a few hand gestures, it's generally the men that get involved in the more threatening behaviour. S is for seatbelts, and despite the fact that wearing them has been law for years, a recent survey revealed that only 49% of adults wear a seatbelt when travelling in the back of a car. Now guys, what are you up to? T is for theory tests. Although women have a 10% lower pass rate than men in practical driving tests, since the theory test was introduced in 1996, women have a much higher pass rate. Go girl!